In this video, I'll be showing you how to create a for loop in MATLAB. Now I already have a code started. In my code, I have a DND character builder. And for that, you have to roll a six sided dice four times and then take the three highest, highest values and add those up. So I'm gonna go ahead and run my code first. And you don't see anything in the command window. I have everything suppressed, but you see it all in my workspace. So you see in my workspace, I have each dice rolled and then I have all the dices put into an array. And then I have my smallest value found and then I have my total based on the three highest. So my code works, I know that it's working right now, but instead I wanna start using a for loop. So I'm going to eliminate these four repeating lines of code with a for loop. And as I said, I know I need to roll the dice four times. So I'm starting with the first dice and then I'm stopping at the fourth dice. I could also put in here, I'm updating by one. That's also the default in MATLAB. So I don't have to put that there. And then I'm going to stop at this point. So my dice roll is now going to be, all of this will be one line. So dice rolls. is going to equal that random value. So this is gonna be going away. I no longer am going to have to build an array by adding all the dice together because I'll be doing that in this for loop. So I want to say the first position, the second position, the third position, the fourth position, which will replicate the idea of four different dice. So first time I go through, I'll get a random number one through six. And then the second time I will get another one, the third one, another, and the fourth one, another. So let's go ahead and run the code. So I left it unsuppressed so you could see that number turning into a larger array. So first I just have a single value. The second time it goes through, I then have two values. The third time I have three values, the fourth time, and the last time I have four values. So again, I have already eliminated a few lines of code. The code works the way it is right now, but the actual context, you would want six different scores for these six different abilities. So I'm going to create another for loop. So using that same concept, um, this time I'm going through ability scores and I'm gonna start at the first one and go up to the sixth one. And I want to include everything this time. And I'm indenting it just to make it easier to look at. So the smallest is gonna be the minimum of the dice rolls. And then I'm going to be summing up all the dice rolls minus the smallest. But instead of just summing them into a one total, I want that total to be growing just as dice rolls is. So I'm going to say for each ability score, keep track of each total. And then I would take those six ability scores and I could assign them to the abilities. So this time I'm going to unsuppress this one. and then go ahead and run my code again. And then we see my totals are again, getting larger. I start with the scalar the first time through this outer for loop. And then by the end, I end with all six different ability scores. And I can run this multiple times and I'm getting different values every time because I'm using this random number generator. So again, here I have one for loop nested inside of another for loop. So I have two for loops in my code. And again, these spaces in here, you can get rid of them, you can keep them, whatever you would like to do, whatever is easier for you to look at formatting wise, you might want even more spaces. However, it is easiest for you to visualize what your code is doing and understand it is good. When you do this type of building an array inside of a for loop, it's gonna give you this error and it's going to tell you that it looks like it's increasing in size as you're iterating through the for loop. That's the whole goal of why you're writing it this way because we wanna keep track of all the different roles and we wanna keep track of all the different totals. So ignore that error. Nothing wrong is happening in your code. It's just MATLAB making sure that you're aware of the fact that you have a variable that's growing in size every time you iterate through your for loop.